One thing I love to see is a flat earther trying to explain their space pizza to a regular person. And recently, Roseanne Barr had David Weiss himself on her podcast. Worryingly, she's given him airtime, but don't worry, as usual, he's talking utter nonsense. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a massive thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Casp. Casp is a chocolate brand like nothing I've seen before. It's like Willy Wonka himself has come to life and produced this chocolate. And the taste, wow. When you order a box, you can select from their 18 flavours to make a personalised and unique box of chocolates. They look so different, like little shiny chocolate thimbles. Selecting your flavours is a really fun experience and the software allows you to see what the box will look like on the inside before purchasing. Now my wife and I were treated to some brand new flavours from Caspi. So we sat down and tasted them all. The blackcurrant cheesecake, unbelievable. Like a little mini dessert in your mouth. Whiskey and vanilla was a perfect after dinner treat. Maple crunch was delicious. You can really taste the maple too. The mango and passion fruit caramel, unlike anything I've ever tasted before, incredible. But my favorite was the apple pie. Genuinely tastes like a home cooked apple pie. So, so good. Click the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN in the checkout to get 20% discount on any purchases with Casp. You will not regret it. Right, on with today's video and the ever incredulous Flat Earth Dave from the YouTube channel DITRH. He's discussing Flat Earth with Roseanne and I'm praying she doesn't take the bait. Here we go. Well, why would they want us to believe that it's round? And there we go, we're already there. That's a very good question. That's where we all default to. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that more, but the reason they want you to believe you live on a ball is because they're hiding who we truly are. They're hiding more resources. Think about this. Every war, what is that about? Land, mm -hmm. resources, power. Right? Ports. Right? What if there's more land? What if they tell us there's eight or nine continents or whatever the number is now? I think what if seven. there's eight what if there's eighty or ninety thousand continents hmm. across the plain, beyond Antarctica? And yet none of these eighty or ninety thousand continents which you say, Dave are concerned with little old us in the middle here, are they? Funny that. There's all, now, and here's the, here's the thing. There's a, in the flat earth community, there's people like, don't talk about more land. You know, you can prove the earth is flat. We can prove the earth is flat right here from everything that we can reach and test and, and measure ourselves. No, you can't, I'm afraid. What's beyond Antarctica is speculation, but there's lots of evidence that there's more land beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. There really isn't. And if your evidence is Admiral Byrd saying so, then that's not evidence. That's Admiral Byrd telling us how big Antarctica is. So you're saying that, like, okay, wait a minute, so it's like a pie, and Antarctica is the pie crust? Well, it's not just a crust. Antar Imagine a lake 100 miles um, across in the middle of Kansas, okay? And at the center of that lake is a magnetic mountain, a mountain made from a magnet, just a magnetic mountain. So no matter where you are on that lake, um, your compass will point to the middle of the lake. A big magnetic mountain? I'd be really impressed to see the evidence for a big magnetic mountain in the North Pole, Dave. Really, really impressed. You with me? Mm -hmm. So south is every direction away from the middle. So south, if, if this is the middle, south is that way, and south is that way, and south is that way, because the compass will always be pointing towards the middle. East and west are circles around the middle. East and west are circles. This, this is the, the Gleason's map that used to be in all of the textbooks and encyclopedias and libraries, and they removed it, mm -hmm. right? Yes, because it's fundamentally wrong, that's why. So if you go east and west, you can go right all the way around, maintaining your east or west direction, and then end up right back where you started from, mm -hmm. right? If, if, you know, if you walked around your neighborhood, does that make your neighborhood a sphere? No, you're just walking around it. If the center of your neighborhood was the North Pole, your, the, the compass would point to the north. Right. No, it makes sense. But w what compass are you talking about? Any compass will do this? Any compass. A compass yeah. points a, a magnetic. A compass points, points towards north. a magnetic force coming out of our north. If you get a table, get a, like a nice strong neodymium magnet, put it on a table, draw a big circle around it, and put a compass near it. That's going to take over. It's going to be stronger than the magnetic 
pole right. and your compass will point towards that and try to push that compass west. You're going to have to keep turning to maintain a west heading because if you go straight, you're going to be going away from that magnet and the north will be yeah, that way and the south. Because it's on a different plane. It makes, yeah, you're, it makes just gonna go, you're just going to go straight. Okay, but how do you explain the opposite tip of the compass needle being attracted to the south pole? On your little map, it will be attracted to an entire circle. But I'd like to spend, before we get into why are they doing it, I'd like to spend more time in your research because I find sure. this, because I, I, just to be clear, I think you're probably a little bit more open-minded than I am. I am. I'm like you were when you started. I don't believe in Flat Earth. We had Eddie Bravo on. Yep. I love Eddie. It was a great episode, but he he's the one that gave me your number. We've been trying to book this for a long time, but I think Flat Earth is absolutely crazy. Okay, this guy's all right, isn't he? So I would like, I you know, I have a bunch of questions. I know you've gone. I think on a most lot of, people do. No, most well, people think it's crazy. So I would like you to actually convince me as a crazy skeptic with sure. with some real info, because most people watching. But I, I mean, this whole thing about like Antarctica is so intriguing to me because I know about. Project High Jump and yep. all that kind of stuff, you know. What, the operation to set up a US base on Antarctica? That's not really something you'd raise your eyebrows at, is it? Yeah, so. Uh, I know it's like we're not supposed to know about Antarctica. Admiral Byrd did a Project High Jump, the high land that's containing our waters, and uh, in the 1940s and 50s, and um, he said he found more land bigger than the United States on the other side mm -hmm. of the South Pole. Well, that would be, you know, from. Where he went from, that would be like near Australia or or Africa. You think they would notice a continent the size of the United States? Well, yes. From the side that he approached the South Pole from, there was an area the size of the United States not explored. This does not mean it goes on forever. The U.S. has a finite size. And he said there's also warmer lands there, which doesn't make any sense. And... Um, and then he he uh, he announced that on a on a national news show, and six months later he died suddenly in his sleep right. somehow. Yeah. So he died of a heart ailment at the age of sixty eight. Hardly shocking at that age, is it? You know, when you say most people um, most people think the Earth is flat, this is a heat map of my app, the Flat Earth Clock app, Should and these are just the people. These are just the the people that have my app, which is less than one percent of flat earthers. That's scary. That's like the Megan's Law website with the. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to see that many. People. There's that many right. people that are on your app. Th this is the UK. Wow. Right. That's so wow. They're, they're everywhere. There's a uh, over 180,000, 185,000 now um, that are on the app. And that's less than one, way less than one percent of the flat earthers out there. How do you not know that most of those on the app are on it for sheer morbid curiosity rather than being actual flat earthers? And also, how do you know that the members on that app are only one percent of the total flat earthers on Earth? Because once you discover this, once you take the time to, um, to see the truth, Several things will happen. One, you'll never forget it. Two, you'll wonder how you ever believed in the ball. I was a diehard global globalist, right? Everything globe, globe, globe. And and we'll get more into um, why the lie, but it's about controlling you. Like if you don't know that there's more resources, if you don't know that there's you know more more land, if you don't know that you're at the center of creation, you don't know who you are, you can easily be controlled by the government. Govern, control, meant mm -hmm. is the mind. Okay, so the average person finds out in your little scenario here that there is more land and more resources beyond Antarctica. Then what? What do they do with that information then? Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So the teaching of the Earth is round. I watched a little bit on you. You're saying that's a relatively new so in teaching. 20, like 100 in years ago, apparently, well, everybody, you said... Back in the days, they used to teach everybody belief flat earth, like uh, to the 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. Well, no, not everybody, no. There were a few flat earth factions back then, but essentially we've known it's been a globe for 2,000 years. So, so I Christopher Columbus, didn't he prove that it was round? That's by going, question. by sailing over the ocean and everything? Well, by looking at an orange and seeing. <laughs> That's so we were just, taught. these are stories thought. told to us by the victors, right? The, right? the controllers. So these are just stories. I don't. I never met Christopher Columbus. I don't even know if he existed. Yeah, but I bet if you did meet him and he said the Earth was a globe, you'd call him a shill, wouldn't you? And uh, you know, a lot of these characters from uh, our past, like Eratosthenes, two thousand years ago in Greece, he did a sticks and shadows experiment, and they pushed that to everybody. Carl Sagan pushed it in the Cosmos series, and. It's in school books, and that is like one of the top proofs that 
Um, kids are taught that the Earth is a globe with the sticks and shadows experiment. Don't flatter yourself, Dave. It's not a traditional proof, as you say. It was more of a way of determining the size of Earth, not that the Earth was indeed spherical. The idea that the Earth is a globe was widely accepted back then when Eratosthenes did, it, did his experiment. And they say it could only happen on a globe, but it actually, in the flat Earth model, it works perfectly. In the flat Earth model, the sun is small and close, right? We don't know what the sun is. It's just in the sky. It's small and close. So get two beer bottles on your on a desk and then hold a light over one of them. There'll be no shadow, and the other one will have a shadow. Right. You can use the same math that Eratosthenes did to figure out the sphericity of your table. On a flat Earth, if the sun was close enough to cause the different angles, as you say, Dave, the angles would vary much more dramatically between different locations, wouldn't they? It would work in one location, but it would mean in two other locations to the north and south of that one, the angles would be different. That is not what we experience. It's which is flat. So just to explain the shadows and rods, if, if you have a curve of the Earth and you put up dominoes, right, and you shine mm -hmm. the sun, the ones that are on the curve would have a longer shadow. Mm -hmm. So that's how they prove the Earth is round, because look over here, it's casting a longer shadow because the sun's up there, where, like a sundial directly at noon, there's no shadow. Right. Proving the, the Earth is round. It, this, it looks this like is, this. Uh, you know, he, an Eratosthenes assumed that all sun rays come in parallel from a distant sun, which is, causes multiple problems, because mm -hmm. no one has ever seen parallel sun rays. Go out when the sun is out and the clouds are like broken up, and look at the rays. They come out crepuscular. They spread out. Oh, Roseanne, stop nodding along. I've mentioned this many, many times before, but let's take a look at this train track. Are they parallel? Well, yes, they are. Otherwise, the train would not be able to travel along them. Do they look parallel here in this photo? No, because of perspective. The same thing is happening with crepuscular rays. Right? But on a, on a, on a flat Earth with a small local sun, you can get the same results as on a ball. But they don't teach you that in school. They teach you that it's the only answer is a ball. That makes so, sense. So just, just in case, I'm sure you understand it if our listeners don't. If it's a small sun closer small to the sun earth, and close. then the angle of the shadow would still work on a flat earth right. model. But if it is the big sun that's you know, 9 million times bigger than us or whatever the math is, that would not work because it would be so massive it would only well, the, work on Well, they say that the, the sun is so big and it's so far away, 93 million miles. Right that the rays come in essentially parallel, but no one has ever seen parallel rays. Go outside on a sunny day, there you go. And back at the time of Eratosthenes, they believed in a geocentric earth, whether flat or globe, I don't care. They believed that the sun went around the earth. How do you have a 93 million mile away giant sun circling a tiny little earth? Yeah, it right. doesn't make sense. So they didn't think that the sun was that far away back then, Dave. They knew it was far away and bigger than us, but they didn't know any details. They're, they're, they literally, get their stories are, are cr crisscrossing. They make absolutely no sense. And people just short circuit. They're like, I just want to get an A on the test. I just want to, well, I just if, want to get that if right. If the sun is large and we are going around it, that, that math works. And, and when are someone, we circling the sun? No, the sun circles us. What? <laughs> this is why I love flat earth theory. He's so, so convinced. The sun circles us? Yeah. So I'm just on this so is going we, super fast. We don't move. Do you feel like you're moving? You might, but no, we, I never do. And yeah. I always wonder that if we're supposed to be spinning at something like 365,000 miles per second. 365,000 miles per second? Wow, that is fast, Roseanne. But no, it's 15 degrees per hour. It's it's six, How come nobody's hair is moving? Inertia. Or? Newton's right. Well, they say mile. because the air is Velcroed to the Earth by gravity. Yeah. And the air is spinning. And because the Earth is, this is, this is the official story. Because the Earth has been spinning so long, the friction of the mountains and the topographical of the you know, surface of the Earth has made all of the air spin with us. Mm -hmm. But a summer breeze can blow left and right and up right? and down, right? Wind is caused by differences in air temperature and pressure within a moving atmosphere. So that means wind speed is relative to the movement of the dragged atmosphere. The sun goes around. Uh-oh. Uh, your YouTube went, oh, oh, sorry. And not to be a nerd, but... The sun circles us, so the whole solar system is wrong. If you're a flat Earther. What about Earth the there? other planets? Well, 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 let's go there in a second. We're, we're, we're but the sun it. goes around. I love this shit. And wherever the sun is, it's <laughs> noon. Okay. And so the sun is a small local light. Now, a lot of globe anti-flat earthers and even some flat earthers will say the sun's 3,000 miles high and 30 miles wide. That works, but it could be 1,500 miles wide and 15 miles wide. Or it could be 7,500 miles high and, you know, seven seven and a half miles wide. Notice how they don't know how big their sun is. They just say it's definitely not really big and it's definitely not far away. 
amazing. It scaling invariance. We don't know. We, I'm making no claims on what the sun is, where it is, other than it's a local light, which we can prove by its rays. Go out on a moonlit night when there's scattered clouds and you'll see that the moon is only lighting the clouds that are right next to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the moon is only reflecting around 11% of the sun's light and it's not a nuclear reactor itself, is it? If it was a quarter of a million miles away, it should light up all of the moon, all of them. What's the question you just asked? You asked me a question. Uh, all the other planets. Yeah, because we, we can see stars moving in the sky and we can track Mars and... Jupiter and all that stuff. Yeah. So if there's no solar system, there's no planets. Right. Rotating. When uh, when you look at when you look at planets, um, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm want to keep this really simple. There's a thing yeah. called the inverse square law. Oh, the math people freak out. It's very easy. When you have an object um, and it's a certain size, move it farther or uh, move it twice the distance away, and it'll be a quarter of the size. Right. right. Okay, and it's the same with the brightness. If I have something that's four lumens here, I double it, it's one lumen, right? Right. It's a quarter, and it's the same as you get closer. When you go out at, at night and look at, um, Ju I like looking at Jupiter because it's the brightest star. Right. You, you've seen it. Yeah. It's brighter than any other star, right? It's, 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 um, it's as bright as the sun, but it's just very small. Incorrect, but yeah, please continue. So Jupiter, they tell us, is a gassy planet, and it's four times farther away from the sun than we are. So we see, so if the sun, if our giant sun was right next to us, it would fill the whole sky, right? Mm -hmm. We move it 93 mi million miles away and it's the size of a coin held at arm's length, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's how we see the sun. Mm -hmm. If we doubled that distance, it would be like the size of an eraser, like the end of an eraser. And if we doubled it again, so now it's four times farther, it would be pretty small. What's your point here? Because Jupiter is small. It would be very small. Mm -hmm. So if you were on Jupiter, that sun is literally like a large star at best. And you have to believe that that distant sun is lighting up Jupiter. That light is reflecting off of the gassy surface, which isn't very reflective, all the way back to your eye, 400 million miles away, and we see it as bright as the sun. Well, actually, the magnitude of Jupiter is around minus two and a half. The lower the number for magnitude, the, the brighter it is. The magnitude of the sun is minus 26. So Jupiter is around eight to nine times dimmer than the sun. But if we follow the inverse square law, it should be 16 times dimmer than the sun. So actually the reality fits our model better than it does yours. The discrepancy there, by the way, is the very reflective surface of Jupiter. Well, there we go. What an episode of Flat Earth Friday that was. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Dave's performance, but for now I'm gonna say we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching, it truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the video. We're so close to that 600,000 now. And when we get there, we've got big plans to celebrate. And of course, if you really, really enjoyed it, a thumbs up would be great as well. Just enough time to once again thank Cass P for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description, use my code Simon Dan at checkout and you'll get a 20% discount. Thank you to them. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.